Never try to be better than someone else. Always learn from others. And never cease trying to be the best you could be. That's under your control. Anybody can be a coach, and a good coach can coach anything. This kid's going to be the best kid in the world. This kid's going to be somebody better than anybody ever knew. The mindset of a coach can belong to anyone. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Pain is temporary. They ask me why I teach, and I reply, where could I find such splendid company? Hey guys, and welcome to episode 15 of the Coaching Mindset Podcast. I'm Liam O'Neill. And I'm Gary Wallace. And this week's podcast is actually sponsored by The Kitchen in Oma. For your healthy eating needs. And yes, big thank you to Kate and Dermot from The Kitchen there for, for sponsoring this podcast. So if you are about to marry, guys, please get down and, and check them out. It's some top quality food in there. Love it. Love it. So Liam, what have we been doing this week, my friend? Uh, so this week, keeping on with last week, we were talking about, we're going to tell you what we did during the week to give us, so just so you know what we're up to. Uh, this week I finalised, had a meeting, finalised the deal with the LA Fitness Show. Woo-hoo. So it's going to be like the biggest fitness show to ever hit Ireland. Um, it's on the 7th and 8th of April, so I'm one of the speakers for us, and we're speaking on both days, and I'll have a stand so you can still get tickets or something. Yeah, it's uh, Joe Wicks, the body coach, is there. Tiffany Bryan's going to be there. Um, and then Kelly, who was on our last podcast, yes, uh, is going to be there as well. So plus loads of other people. Nice. Um, so it'll be really good. And if you're into health, fitness, sports, mental yeah. or physical, get down and check it out. So, or if you just want to talk to Liam, meet him in person. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see him in person. Do that. Go ahead. Uh, so I guess basically what I did, apart from you know the generic run of the mill stuff that I have to do, but that's the most exciting thing I did this week. Nice. Uh, what about yourself? Uh, well, a few things. The first thing is we launched our Core Kids Easter Camp. So it's running the 4th, uh, 4th, 5th and 6th of April. So you right. can go online. It's www.bookwayand.com forward slash Core Kids. Um, and well, hopefully it might sell out, but it's going to sell out quick because it's a bit like a midterm camp. Then the next thing, um, I was back up with the underage of the national squads for Club NA um, because I have to meet the Liverpool Academy. We were over some of the SSC guy and the, the head coach of the underage teams over there. So it was great, I see. They're possibly saying one of our players. Awesome. That's great. So, yeah, it's really good. And he just had a good chat with him, just talking about uh, programming and things. It was just good to share philosophies and also to get invited over <laughs> to Liverpool. Yeah. Which I'm going to bring in Liam, he's not yes. involved. <laughs> oh! <I laughs> so, <love. laughs> yeah. so that's, that's what I've been at. Brilliant. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the listen up and I hope you enjoy what Tiernan has to say. I really enjoyed his talk. He's a very positive person. Uh, again, I'm not very football, so it was good to have both sides of us talking about football and non-football. Um, but just his philosophy is really good. And I think if more young people could listen to the type of stuff that he's talking about and, and implement it, they would just improve all aspects of their life. So listen up. And again, if you have any questions, let us know whenever you need. to episode 15 of the Coaching Mindset Podcast. I'm Liam O'Neill. And I'm Gary Wallace. And today we have another guest on. We have uh, Tyrone star Tiernan McCann. So we're going to pass it over to Tiernan now. Tiernan, do you want to introduce yourself to our lovely listeners? How's it going? I'm Tiernan McCann, um, Kelly Clahar player and Tyrone player. Um, good friend of Gary's. Uh, he asked me to come on, so delighted to be asked to come on. Good friend, you have a good friend. Yes, yes. Um, I, me and Tiernan go back a long way. So, well, obviously, growing up playing together, but I think our friends have really started whenever our Sunday night journeys up to university when uh, Tiernan was studying up in Korea, UUC, and I was, <laughs> sure. I was working up there. Um, so, now, yeah, that's where we kind of our friends have got a lot stronger. Let's just say it was good. It was good. And we also had a good few nights out as well, too, which helped. Oh, we might talk about a few of them, but we'll see. <laughs> well, but yeah, so Tiernan, um, great to have to have you on. I think your story is very good and inspirational too to a lot of people. Um, is there any sort of certain topics that you want to, to discuss today or get into? Um, I think one thing we can potentially branch on is overcoming setbacks. Um, I know across a variety of people, in, in, particularly in sport, you're going to encounter a lot of bad days as well as good days. 
and it's about basically how you respond to those setbacks and tips or tools or ways to go about these setbacks versus injuries or um, bad days in terms of results or poor performances or even in life in terms of bereavements or um, accidents you know there's always a way out and you know, there's always a way back and I just thought that would be beneficial to the podcast. Very good, very good. Yes, and well, we can we'll start with the current sort of setback. Um, do you want to just give us a quick update on your your injury? Um, where where you we are at the moment? Yeah. Um, scientific terms, it's called a fractured patella, which nice. layman's terms is a broken kneecap. <laughs> it's on your knee. <laughs> uh, sustained that two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. So still in the brace at the moment. Um, how did you do it? Playing football, knee on knee collision in the last minute and injured him so sort of a disappointing one to get sore one too um, but these things happen for anyone listening like people are buying the knee just off things yeah. that's why so so breaking your kneecap mm. must be pretty awful did you walk it off? you told to walk it off they obviously that a couple just walk it off yeah, throw some water on <laughs> I think <laughs> <it's bad. laughs> I know I hobbled on for a couple of minutes and then I literally come off it was at the very end of the game so um, wasn't it wasn't to that night that I realised how serious it was because it was an angry all night. Um, didn't get much sleep at all, and obviously went for tests the next day and discovered I had fractured it. So obviously very disappointing. Won't be out for a couple of months, but it gives me plenty of time to do stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, you get it. <laughs> we, we, what we, is we, the what are they telling you to do for that? Like what's the um. At the minute, well, from the start, there's a machine called the Game Ready machine that basically pumps ice, cool water around your knee, that's for A, compression, and B, reducing swelling. So I was on that 30 minutes, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off, the first week, flat out, line up, and Molly come up to visit me. Yeah, made a nice three coffee. Three and a half hours. <laughs> he's, he's decent coffee maker, take yeah. up and out there, like, anybody wants a coffee with you. Flat whites, yeah. flat whites, he's flat decent whites. at it. Um, anybody like, took the chocolate that I brought up, the protein bars, and they took the white chocolate one. Well, Wally brought the fulfilled bars, like. <laughs> yeah, shout out to fulfilled too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> send us stuff. I'm not even that but send it. <laughs> also, to help the bone healing, I've got an ultrasound device I put on twice a day for 20 minutes each session. Um, I'm getting an oxygen tent delivered tomorrow. That's more so for my deconditioning, to reduce my deconditioning. So basically, yeah. um, it's like training during the night and living at altitude during the night. Wow. Right. Is that like... Like, I'm just cutting them into my head at ET. <laughs> <laughs> you just got a big tent around you then, they surrounded um, around the whole house, maybe. <laughs> I think it's one of the for younger kids. <laughs> <laughs> ET, I check it out. Um, it actually looks like Barra Collins. Oh, yeah, I like the Barra thing. You're going to definitely get tagged in that. <laughs> uh, what else have I got? Um, I'm taking calcium, vitamin D, magnesium tablets. Um, I'm on an Alter G machine at the minute up in Gervahe, so. That's like walking at at a certain percentage of gravity uh, and taking away. So um, the gist of this, you're doing everything that you can. Basically, yeah. Basically, Whereas, yeah, yeah. Whereas like I work with a lot of people with injuries, and I, I might give them wee homework, like just mobilize your knee every day, and they come back a week later, and I say, "Have you done that?" And like, oh, I don't really bother. You know yourself, or roll your foot on the tennis ball. They do it every day. No, I didn't really bother, but yet they complain that it's holding them back and stuff. So even. Your attitude towards, I think just because we're getting about, coming back from setbacks, your attitude towards how you are and your, your injury is very good because you're willing to, like, you've named, I would say, 90% of people listening will have heard three, at least three ways of recovering that they've never heard of in their life. Sitting going, what has he got? <laughs> Gee, is that a great answer? Who's, <laughs> who's that you know what I mean? Like, they, they, yeah. Because they won't have researched, they won't have tried, they won't have gone out there and tried to to get healing because either people just think right that's me like most people break in i think that's it's weaker now oh god that's weaker that's my bad or yeah. i injured it when i was a kid falling off my bike and like that's yeah. you're about 50 now and <laughs> um, so <laughs> mentally what are you doing is there anything that you have in place mentally well, to recover everyone keeps coming up to me and saying ah oh, it's depressed sitting at home all day i'm sure you're very you're devastated about this injury and i just try to keep positive that's the number one thing for me it's being positive about it and um, I see setbacks as like I have a screen wallpaper on my phone now it was also in the championship so 
That's about the idea. That's the best. I know we're going to get a new one. That's the best reference to get a new one. Yeah, new I've had that for two years. So the new one is um, a setback is a platform for a comeback. So I just look at that every day and realize that I have a job to do every day. Get up, take my tablets, do, do the ultrasound work, get on the the game ready machine. If I can get to um, up to Garai to use Ultra G. I was walking on it yesterday for 15 minutes. Or for 30 minutes, sorry, at 50% body weight. And that might sound like nothing to people, but for me, that's that's a target that I've achieved. And the next day, I'll be doing something similar again. So I think mindset-wise, it's just about being positive, reading up on stuff. Um, any percentage I can get to get better, quicker and better and stronger, then I'm, I'm happy to do it. Give it a go. That's where I'm Because I think a lot of people will listen going, oh, no, you, you're in the throne setup. You have this, or you can get this. But... There's still stuff available to people, as Liam says, they don't go go and do it. I think annoying as well too, and we when I called up the house too, you you had a goal, you know, you, your goal is to get back playing for the club, you can get back playing for, for the county, you, you really want to do that. Uh, do you think that's a big help or a big focus for you when the setback? Massively, yeah, having goals, something to aim for, that's that's crucial. Um, and it ties into that positivity thing that I'm going to go back to this and give yourself an aim and really go for wake up every day and target it. I think that's goal setting is crucial like in all aspects, just sport, fitness, health, everything. Even just for your lay person, setting a goal of I want to be able to walk to the shop again. I want to be able to drive my car again. Like, you know, just in general, we've talked about this before, goal setting, I think goal setting is a brilliant idea in general. But but if you are injured, thinking about how how you're gonna to get to where you're gonna get, find out where you want to be and then work back from that so that you know each step that you can take. And like Gary said, there's loads of stuff out there. There's masseuses you could yeah. tie little bands around yourself or around a thread and make your own. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. I said it was people just hang up and jealous. If you do, <laughs> <they're> <laughs> um, I, I think that's a very good point that you said too, having someone on your screensaver, you know, that you constantly constantly look at. Uh, we talked about this before too, goal setting as maybe having something in another place to put it as, as a mirror in your bathroom. We're yeah. going to see it every day. So if you're coming back from a setback, no matter what it is, if you've talked about anything, you know what's what's the end goal from that setback? Okay, if you've, you've had this this bad time, you're you have been knocked back from, you know, you're trying to lose weight or you don't have and gain fine, you, you've lost all this motivation. Set yourself that goal, but set it, write it down, get some visual that you can see every day, and then train yourself every day to look at it. Because then when the days are really bad, you go right. Well, no. I've looked at this and know what I'm doing. Whereas if you just put it off to the side and then it, the day, bad day comes, you're like, oh, I couldn't be bothered anymore. And you're yeah. nothing really to, to visualize or something. That's why a screensaver is always good in your phone. How often do you look at your phone? <laughs> like every Pretty day much. You're, you're looking at a lot. So just having that and the amount of time you get even just messages that annoy you, at least whenever you get out of the message that we yeah. can't that you like. Like I've had a quote on my phone for the last four years. So it's, it's been the exact same quote. Sometimes I'll change the colours of it so I'll get different, just so it looks different, so it's more eye catching again. Um, what, whenever you were talking about setbacks, things you talk, you're you're obviously in, in different teams. I'm interested to know how do you deal with a mental setback in a team like when I, like say if you lose the championships or don't win the touchdown or <laughs> by the way, <laughs> whatever you Liam, say. Liam knows nothing about football. <laughs> So uh, this is why if there's any terminology that kind of seems Americanized or anything. Worst terminology out there. <laughs> but the yeah, pigskin, it's... so whenever you're running that pigskin. No, but seriously, <laughs> whatever, whenever you lose or something, I know that some people take it differently, but as a team, you just have to still come together and train, like the next day when maybe Gary messed up and was fixing his hair or something, or looking at some girl in the crowd and missed the winning point like uh, I have my own setback on that team <laughs> we'll let Tim answer that one first and then I'll talk so, so as a team like what, what what do you think you bring to a team that would um, obviously you'd like to think that in a, some capacity or form you bring leadership to a group uh, and the older and more established you become the more confident you are in terms of being vocal in terms of setting the right example within a team and uh, I've been lucky to play in teams that have had really good leaders throughout the years and as I say, the older you get, if you feel it's like your duty, you know, when the team's not going well, right, let's get back to basics, let's get back to 
and um, doing all the right things, attention to detail, getting everything right. You know, the famous book on the All Blacks legacy, their two best players, two of the greatest rugby world players in the history of the game, um, Dan Carter and Richie McCall, like they, they swept the sheds after the game. So that's how humble they are. Yeah. That's bringing back to the humility thing of cleaning up after them. Nobody needs to look after them. They get back to the basics. I think that's something that encompasses a team sport is that it is team and mm. um, the team always comes first. And maybe Gary wants to add a little bit yeah. more in that capacity. Well, I think definitely like playing playing the team setup and being very fortunate playing some great teams that, as well too, it's it's the fact that you know, the mental side of it, it's not just your teammates, it's your friends. You know, so if you do have a setback, you know, you feel like right, I want to do this for for not only teammates but my good mates outside of this and it's like a kind of like a family. I think as well too when you just it came into my head when you ran to the mountain Richie McCaw, he had a good one for a setback on the pitch. So what he used to do is he used to kick the ground. So what he used to say was like right, kick the ground, kick back, and that that's gone. Okay, so he made a, a mistake on the pitch at all, he used to kick the ground, or I know a lot of goalkeepers would if they fumble the ball or anything, would pick up a blade of grass and throw it away, and then they'd be like, find that blade of grass, it's the same as your mistake. You're not going to see it again. Yeah. So on to the next thing. So that's a, just we yeah. positive mental ways of, of doing it. Um, again, the top guys still do these simple things, so it, it must work. <laughs> yeah. Almost. So yeah. So I have myself been part of teams, but m- most of the time we train as a team, but then we go out and fight or compete as an individual. Like once you're on the mat or the lake high or whatever that you have to be fighting on at the time, you're on your own for that. Well, obviously, you have your team around you, but you're it's down to you so if I lose it's down to me not doing what I did so it was just interesting to know like if it's down to someone else's uh, injury or someone else's mistake or or whatever just how you stay with that but I like that idea of the blade of grass and things just to give you a mental a mental image of what there's no point holding on to yeah. it's not going to do you any good that's there and now um, I think when, when we're on on the subject I think Dan and I both have experience of it but maybe when you were felt that you were maybe at fault for something. I know there was an incident before, it was the Monaghan game, with, <laughs> with the hair incident, we'll call it. But again, that's not to get in, into the detail, but again, how, how did you feel yourself in terms of a setback towards a team? You know, how did that make, make you feel? Mm, yeah. That's a tough question to answer. Um, well, we won the game, so we were not in the semi final, so that was a positive that came out of it it wasn't as if I let the team down and, and the result had yeah been the, the root cause or result from it and um, so we were uh, in terms of the team we were progressing on in the championship and it probably affected me more so than the team itself and um, retrospectively I got banned and by the GPA or the GA sorry and um, for eight weeks they made up a rule that I put the, the GA into disrespect, but he'd never ever put anybody I into it. that. <laughs> yeah, so I had to go to Crow Park and feel it one Thursday night after working a nine to six job in Dungannon. I had to go to Royal Crow Park. I was there at three in the morning. It was actually the week of the All Ireland semi final, so in terms of preparation, not ideal, but um, it was more so the whole impact across social media. Um, I had to delete my Twitter account um, due to the hate, due to the abuse I was getting and, and it was something that, I'd, yes I made a mistake of course, but nowadays with social media one person says something and it's just, it gathers momentum and everybody gets on the bandwagon, everybody feels after they're saying it, um, it affected my working environment too because I felt, I didn't feel like I had the confidence to go out and speak to people in case they wanted to bring that up. Um, so it did affect me for an amount of time, but I had to just get on with it. And luckily, it got cleared to play in the, in the semi final against Kerry, which we were kicking the ball away from winning, getting the iron final. But it's one of those things you just learn from, really. Yeah, uh, that was a good game, too. That was, that was Josh's first time in Crow Park. <laughs> I was in Crow Park once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally once. I chose to sit behind a guest. Is this a YouTube concert? <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, well, whatever you think with that, then I've been here a couple of times. I forgot they do concerts. Yeah. Um, whatever you say, the social media thing happened, uh, the hate, just because you mentioned it earlier before we started, 
the hit wasn't just the average hit that most people get where it's like shut up man why are you talking about you're not like a fool <laughs> you're bald I was, oh. I was gonna say that <laughs> but, I said it uh, thanks very much <laughs> um, but you you got like yours wasn't just the normal average hit do you, do you want to sort of explain a wee bit about that like you don't have to go too deep into it but just so people know that Whatever, because we're talking about setbacks again, a lot of people think a setback is, oh, my mate didn't like my post. I put a picture up of me in a bra and no one cared. Yeah. Like, you know, and people freak out or I went in three o'clock in the morning and droned and Gary didn't <laughs> like my post. Uh, and, that, and people think that's like the worst thing ever, but it gets worse. Like uh, the, the more you open, like we talked about this in the last podcast too, the more you're open uh, on social media and the more you're open to not nice people being extra not nice so um do you want to go into any of that or, or i absolutely agree with you there i think twitter it, the way you address it there is pretty nail on it's a platform that you can get your point across it used to be 140 characters now you can write as long as you want but it also gives you the platform that anybody can say anything to you really yeah um and i quickly learned that after the Monon game obviously uh, got viral abuse and Twitter's not the easiest app well it's an easy app but it's not the easiest platform to take yourself completely off to you told me about a day figuring out uh, how to deactivate yeah. your account <laughs> it's really not straightforward unless they've changed it this is three years ago um, but yeah like young young people people of all ages writing nasty vile personal comments um, and being able to to see that just come through your Twitter feed the next day, later on that day and the next day we had a training session the next day and literally just opened my phone in Gravai and they've got Wi-Fi in Gravai so hey. <laughs> everything came straight through. That's uh, just it's, one of those things. It's one of those things and I think the good thing that you mentioned that but what did you do to actually overcome that again you're talking about the setback now you're needing you know right well i have to get the game ready and get the action intent on doing this yeah. this is a totally different setback different so well, how, yeah. how did you prepare how, how did you come through that um i had close people beside me and um, had friends and family that were checking on me for a start for the first couple of days and um, i deleted deleted twitter took myself off that tried to um, reduce the amount of articles and social media I was on that week just tried to block myself away from all that and it was just a process of getting back to doing what I was doing and that was playing football getting back to training hard concentrate on um, my performances rather than what I knew I could what you can control try to control it control the controllable so I can't control what people thought or what people yeah. want to say and so I just cast that aside and said well then I shouldn't be worrying about it what I can control is how well I prepare now for the semi-final. I'm going to train and work hard as a fan playing, although I had this hearing coming up, I had still in my head I was going to be playing. Um, self-talk, mental talk, telling yourself that you're... A good one I learned when I was maybe 13 or 14 was writing down I can, I will. So I can tackle a man and I will tackle a man. Um, I can take a score, I will take a score. Just self-talk like that. Uh, affirmation work really I suppose yeah. when you're you're saying yeah. things you, that's probably something you used to happen to all the time no definitely I, I think it's it's a great point that it wasn't until you talked about you doing this when you were 13 but you maybe got your setback when you were what 20 what you what is you don't scare me here now you're 26 or so when I was 23 23 what so but there's 10 years but there's 10 years of of you know mindset stuff that you worked on that when you did have the back the setback it didn't take you months or years to come back from because you've trained the mind throughout your years, maybe without you even realizing mm. that you could turn around and go, well, you know what, I'm ready for this because I, I know I can and I know I will. Um, so I think that's that's a good point for anybody out there that don't wait until, we always say this, don't wait until the setback. Train yeah. the mind now, train the body now, even with simple meditation. And like I, I said, I started doing that now, the Headspace app. But just even before you get overwhelmed again, even with, with work, with life, that you know, right, well, I know how to deal with this now, I know where the, the trigger's coming, and I can set back. So I think um, that's a very good point that, that you made in terms of whenever you were 13, you started to do that. 
Um, just to clarify that, did it take you long to kind of get over that, or like was it days, weeks, or months? Probably months. If it, like I registered to work in the south as well, um, and it took me a long time to go to Monaghan to work. Just yeah. something as simple as that. I'd be thinking walking down the street, oh, then people want to know. I was the person who dived against them in twenty fifteen, and I always had that worry over me, which is something so pathetic and pedantic. I should. And it's obviously since then I've worked on one of those times and the people are all very nice, you know. Yeah, sure. um, <laughs> uh, branching more wide. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's but that, that's it too. I think and that's a good point that that you made and you said it. Oh, so and so silly or so stupid. It's these wee silly or stupid things that you think you know mm. play a massive. Like Liam, obviously, you want to play something more. You work with people with anxiety and, and different things. I. To to you something silly and small can be massive to somebody else. Like something like so like if I was sent out in front of an audience of a hundred thousand people, which I've done once in Trafalgar Square, to me that was just chatting a bit like chatting here, but to somebody else going and chatting to two people would be horrifying. So it's how you how you deal with it and I think going back to you're saying control the controllable. Whenever I'm working with my fighters, I would get them to draw like an octagon or, or a mat or a cage, it depends where they're fighting. And put inside that cage everything they can control about their training, their their mental attitude, their sleep, their eating, and outside everything else, like their family, their friends, social media, everything. So that the, anytime, and then we call it fight prep. So anytime they'll text me about something unrelated, like, all my missus is giving me a follower, I'll just text my fight prep. And then they go, oh, I understand, right, it's not part of it. Do what you're doing, and then deal with, deal with that bit. So even just at 13, you were able to come up with that. So people listening could teach everyone that they know that, you know, just doing something as simple as I can and I will or just telling them, telling their kid to, like if, I, if my niece comes in and, and we, we talk about how awesome they are or we'll do power poses or, or sumo squats or something. So it can be enforced in young people so that if they have setbacks, which they will when they're older, they have these things implemented and then they can deal better with, like social media, like we've, we've talked about it a few times, yeah. it can be horrible. I think the best way, if, you ever watch Jay and Bob's Strike Back? Kevin Smith, he's... Kevin Smith's on really makes loads of movies and stuff. He actually had a massive heart attack recently, so shout out to him for being <laughs> well. But he, at the end of his movie, they, they make a movie within their movie. It's about they making a movie. And social media people give them grief. So whenever they make all this money with their movie, they use all that money to travel around to every single person on social media and just they beat the shit out of them. <laughs> They'll read it out for like Gary Wallace said this movie was shit. Did you? Yeah, and then they'll hammer him. Um, if that happened, people would be a lot nicer on social media because people just hide behind a keyboard and just can say whatever to whoever. And they don't like they go and tell people to kill themselves and then just go and have a wee bowl of cereal yeah, and sit with their wee bowl of cocoa pops. They don't think it affect, it's going to affect not only does it affect the people, but the people around you, like family and friends, would have been reading that and thinking, she said, I need, like. It's wild and bad, and then they would be worried about you as well. So then you have the, the guilt of causing hassle or bother for your family. So I think social media just needs to be checked, especially any parent system. I know there's a lot of parents listen. Keep an eye on your kids' mm. social media. I don't know how I went on that run. I know. I guess we just go back to that. I don't know. If you can on top of that. That's a really good one for for any sport or any anything in life. That one where you could put everything, sorry, I was even thinking there off a football oh, pitch. Mm-hmm. You could put everything in that and everything outside it there, and you just roll, you know, match prep, game day, whatever it is, your keyword. And because, keep it to yourself. Like I always tell people, keep it to yourself because you will write wife, girlfriend, child, and then if family members or someone sees that and they're like, oh, what does this mean? And then you turn around and say to them, what do you send your partner? Oh, the stuff inside is important, the stuff <laughs> outside is not. Out of context, that's terrible, but in context, you can't be sitting in the cage thinking, right, I need to go and sort the dinner out, or she's going to go mental that I haven't done dinner. Or when people are prepping for shows, you ever be around anyone prepping for a, like a bodybuilding show or anything? Uh, do you have the photos done on Oh, well, yeah. Check them out, we'll link Check them. Out, them. Out, out. Yeah, it was my fake talent, really. <laughs> that was... <laughs> And as there's another shout out there to the Mickey C from the Shed 10, big Mickey from Ballandary. The, the, the keeper, keeper right. starting the zone. In the zone. Mickey, Mickey from Ballandary, the Ballandary legend. <laughs> so yeah, um, <laughs> big, big sidetrack there again. We're all visualizing the new scanning tablets. 
He's standing in a pair of speedos with you, see? <laughs> no, you're not. But um, but yeah, no, I think it's a time to, for me, you mentioned I'm not going to hang it. It wasn't on the, the national scale as you, but I just sat back as such with the, with the county final. A few years ago, I got sent off, um, <gasps> you know, but again, another incident where I flicked my hand somewhere I shouldn't, <laughs> but it was caught on camera, and I remember the same thing. I came home, well, I got, I got sent off, and I just went to the, to the dugout, and my head was down, and I was like, oh my God, oh, this is, I'm a really tight game. And it wasn't until Nathy Donnelly came and scored a big legs and point. Oh, I was never, no, it was <laughs> never more relieved in my life. But even straight after that, I felt I just had let everybody down. I just let everybody so down. Sure. Yeah, family, friends, and then especially any teammates. But <clears throat> it is, like I had to see him, social media, and it was at the time I was coaching underage kids. And they all seen it. And like I was meant to be there to be like a conditioning coach or sports science and <clears throat> telling them, you know, you have to do all these healthy habits, you have to do this. And they're like, Are you go right hunting, boys. <laughs> I was like, in the balls. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was, I was reading a setback and it wasn't maybe until you might not have known, but it was, uh, we had a meeting, I think the day or two after. And literally it wasn't the day of the meeting and it was when I started to refocus. I literally stood up at the end of the meeting and just says, look lads, Apologies, like, and um, but go and go and right your wrongs. So and that for me, then that was me just switched back on, and I didn't really care then too much about social media or mm-hmm. the videos. Now you're being sent about them, people talking about it. I think my dad even was standing in the shop the next day, and somebody came over and flicked it. <laughs> he said, hey, "Your son's at it." I was like, "Okay." People think this is a joke, but sometimes it can be a bit more serious than that. Like if we had lost that game, you know, and somebody had made a joke about it. You never something like that would be very hard to get over. Yeah, and I guess you said too that you, you at the end of the day you you just won the game. People yeah. can call it call it sportsmanship, whatever. But you 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 were happy with the fact that look, we're didn't three to make sure. And didn't the fact the result, the outcome of the game, there was there was an injury time. It was pure instinctive. It was it's honestly hand on heart. It wasn't until after the game, uh, until I seen it that I realized I'd done what I'd done. I thought he actually. He had his hand up and he was going for my head. Yeah. And he just took a contact and went down. It wasn't until after it was nice. actually a yeah. of, uh, of the perm. <laughs> and that's good. A pair of mine and <laughs> you know? No one can ruffle you. And then let, if we do go back to results because I know you've been involved in a lot of high key games. What, what's the setback or how do you feel then? You know, if it's a county final you lose or, or it's with Tyrone in a, in a semi final of All Ireland. You know, how, how do you come back from that setback? So first of all, how, how do you, what's the emotions going through you first whenever you come out? Good question. The, probably the first setback that I experienced, which at 17, 18, probably a real significant one in terms of my life, was not making the McCurry Cup squad. So I went to the Brothers on CBS, and when you're there, it's a massive GA school, it's in Tyrone, the be all and end all, well, at the time you assume is to make the school's GA team in sixth or seventh year or whatever. So when I was seventh year, my age, I didn't make the panel in 30, 35, which was obviously incredibly disappointing. And, and wrong. So wrong. Maybe now. Maybe now. So I, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I sat back. Well, what I concentrate there was just getting back to a study, uh, continue to study really hard and, and focused everything on my schoolwork really, uh, on my A-levels. That was a setback that I think made me as a person because um, I went on to get do well in my A-levels and get into pharmacy. I was I always wanted to do a career for the rest of my life and that came from it really fueled my ambition and my work rate within that was not making them Cory Cup squad at school. And later on that year, then I made the Tro Miners and the Tro try on. So that's something that maybe I wasn't doing things right. Maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was or wasn't working as hard as I thought I was. And that was maybe a kick up the backside. It, it, it really drove my hunger, drove me to be a better player, to work harder, to get stronger, faster. Every, every facet of my game, that, that gave me um, real motivation to do that. Um, so I think when we're talking about setbacks and how do you overcome them, I always use them as motivation, a motivation tool to get better. Really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like you saying there, you had a setback, but you took the positives from it, but you didn't make them a quarter cup team. Okay, but now I have my studies. Now I have another part of the night. Two or three hours a night that boys were maybe travelling to 
to train in and train in and get home from training that I could put into my yeah. extensive work into my chemistry or biology, whatever it was. Uh, I think that's good because the fact of, and it's just being aware of that, it's realising that, because you still could have done that work and went, still been sulking about not getting on the team, where you, oh, I'm not on the team, I'm doing this homework, well, whereas you're at, well, I'm not on the team, but now look, I get the time to do this work and I'm actually going to be better at this. Mm. Whereas I think that's something where people, if they get a setback, still don't focus yeah, on the setback. Yeah, excuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, you focus on right, what's the positive I can take from this. I think that's, that's, that's one key thing probably even from, from today is your setback, step back, reevaluate and go, right, well, what positives can I take from this? You know, um, I'm sure that's not the only setback you had in your career because you had a great career so far. What age you, by the way? 26. 26, wow. Come so, on, so, on, seven. Older than me. Uh, just, just older than you, yeah, just older than me. So, at that, we recorded Cup and then what was, as you're, you now you've, you've developed as a, as a player and you're starting now to be recognised and you're starting now to be a leader in teams. What was kind of the next setback you kind of The next through? one was, I'd been on the throne squad for two or three years, um, not getting on, kind of bit part of the rules and it was about 2015 I started to play a lot of league games. Did well against the likes of Dublin and stuff in the league but I hadn't really cemented myself as like a starter or a recognised player in the team and for the championship that year um, I could I was named to start so it might be hard sometimes to name a 15 to start and then two or three changes to that later on. I was one of the changes that day so I was dropped for the biggest game of the year in the championship. That was going to make a beep with Donegal, so we're going to like a... Because they dropped you. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I came on, but they did make an impact. So the next game I got on, we played Limerick or something in the qualifiers, which was, we were very massive favourites to beat them, which we did. Um, and the next game then was against Meath. Same thing happened again. It was due to start. And I um, was told the training on the Thursday night it wasn't to start again. So was, the same thing happened within the space of like a month or two. And nobody probably knows this bar, some of my friends, close friends and stuff, but that night I went home from training and I, I drank a beer in the house, which I yeah. never ever do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hardcore. It was, just, it was like a release or something. I was like, I'm so annoyed, what did I do? And it just was like one beer gave me like this release. So weird. Anyway, the match was on the Saturday evening uh, and we were getting beat at half time. Looked like we were going out of the championship. Throwing, this was like a new team. Uh, well, there was critics about us all year. We got relegated from Division 1. Everything was going against us. We were getting beat at half time by Meath at home in the round two of the qualifiers. Like, and I was like, what is going on here? I'd one, I remember distinctly one player beside me was like, oh, at least we can go to a beef there or something in the morning. And I was like, what is he thinking about? Like, I can't believe yeah. he's even thinking about that. And I was like, right, if I get, I'm going to come on here. Uh, and I want to make a difference. It's so clear to me, sitting up in the stand, so clear. We just need somebody to take the bull by the horns and go at the other team. It looked like we were playing with complete fear, inhibition. Nobody, nobody was going at me. So I remember Mickey Hart then telling me at half time that right, you're going on here. And I was so annoyed, I couldn't even look at him because I was so annoyed about being dropped. Was, and maybe I was really, really motivated and focused to come on and prove him wrong or whatever. But I come on and won a penalty, scored a couple of points and got man of the match in that game. Whoop whoop! We went, on that, we went on that year, this was the same year in the Monaghan instance, we went on that year to be playing an All-Ireland semi-final in front of 60, 70,000 and be, literally be a kick of the ball away from getting to an All-Ireland final that year and I think that was the year that I really made a breakthrough. That was the year that I announced myself on like maybe a national stage because of the hair thing. Um, but as a couple <laughs> too, or, yeah. Um, so I think that was that was the making of me as a throne player then sort of cemented myself as a, a starter after that and that came from a, a setback ironically yeah. a couple of setbacks and then I could have took it two ways I could have thought like my teammate and be like ah oh, sure freak this um, yeah. what does he know um, we'll go to go on holiday tomorrow um, but I didn't I was like right I'm going to just go and do my own thing here come on and make a difference make an impact and thankfully that's what happened that day that's good. I think you mentioned it before too. You just didn't forget about the setback. You know, you, you were annoyed and you were angry at, 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 at Mickey Hartford for dropping you. And rightly you should be. And I think anybody who coaches is coaching a team. If somebody isn't annoyed, then it's a problem. But you use that as a as a fuel Field, yeah. positivity to go, well, you know what? Not only am I going to prove I'm wrong, I'm going to prove myself right. 
you know, I'm gonna, I know that I can do this, and this is this I'm gonna showcase myself. But again, it's not being all happy and all that setback, yeah. and let's look at the positives. Yeah, yeah. So be aware of, of the setback, but use it as, as you said, it rightly says, as fuel to do it that. Happens. That happens in every sport. I've pulled fighters when I was in London, pulled fighters from comps saying, look, you're not ready, you haven't competed. And some of them then just leave. Yeah. Just never come back, they never, yeah. we never do anything. And then others come back and become world champions that, that you never really thought was going to be a world champion. But because you, like, I think as a coach, it depends how you were told that you were you were like if you were just told you're trapped in, in, a, in, a, in a manner that you thought oh, he's never he has no respect he's not gonna but because it's Mickey you would have known and he's, he still respects me he's still keeping on the team so the women party still no one there's still a chance and that I think would have helped you drive so it's, it happens in every sport where you have people that you pull for whatever reason and then it's up to them then to either decide whether they continue on that setback and go with the road of Nowhere, or yeah. if they use it as as fuel. Like I worked with, remember me and Tom Morrison talked about this before. He took me up to help him overcome. He was doing a snatch and he couldn't get past a certain weight. And I came over and was so nonchalant about how because I know I work with Tom though, so he was like, I want to get to ninety five, and I sort of just tapped him and was like, I right, you so you made me drive from the from Oma to Lisbon. To get you to ninety five, and I, I repeatedly tapped him. I'd set this up before we trigger for him, and I was like, "Give me a shout when you get to a hundred And I walked off, and I was so annoyed that I didn't care. And the whole gym was full of people, and they were real ready to do this. They were so annoyed, and they could have just stepped back, but he used that. And there's a video of him going mental, which was stupid because then it held him back later. But he threw up that way. They couldn't get past ninety two point five for maybe over two weeks, and just that wee moment where he was like. Oh, is that right? I'll yeah. Show you that. So people depend if you know that how the people work, and again, Mickey is a good coach, so he would know how you, he would know how you work, so he would know what this way to say it to you. But again, like it's down to you. And I think this brings back I keep thinking about when you were you were thirteen and you worked on on your, your own positive affirmations and for again, just I said it already, but for parents listening, you can reinforce that in kids. So you you've had a lot of setbacks just going up each each level of your career, even from school right up. But you yourself were able to sit down and go, right, what can I take from this? And what and then use it as fuel and motivation, whereas a lot of people would just give up if they don't have that um, mindset. And again the mindset comes from the people around you. So obviously the family and friends you had around you were you know like Gary. Yeah. <laughs> or, or say you know, from people yeah. like Gary. They didn't even realise I was I was Coaching them the whole time, it was Sunday, an hour, an hour and a half up the road. It's like, didn't even realize, just putting those wee feeders in there. Oh, <laughs> Rubbing um, his knees, not yeah. sure he's limbered up and all. Yeah. Um, I suppose, on a personal note, for me as well, uh, another setback that we had, and it just could get your thoughts on it, was losing the, the county final to Trillick a few years ago. Um, again, straight in it, how, again, how did that make you feel, and what, what did you, what way did you go? get that or come back from that setback um, I feel as if everybody can respond to defeat in different ways um, so for example we ended up just I, I think I, the, the week booked off work you know after the county final you always sort of have a couple of days off work after it to celebrate or to just drink <laughs> <laughs> so that week that, that time we had planned like most of the team we just we did get it out of our system we did Go in the beer of it. We did, went to Belfast or whatever, but Connell, my brother who doesn't drink, he drove to Ross Nilo one day and just sat on the beach for about five hours. So everybody everybody deals with defeat in different ways and who's who's right? Like who says is it's right? You know, I think it's Paul O'Connell said a team that that you're together and in winning and then you're together in defeat or something like that. Something to that effect. You know, you don't all branch off. Yeah. Yeah. Teams you win together, stay together, and or teams you win together, lose together as well. Aye, sort of something thing. like that. So we <coughs> it was just something we did as a group and we got back to work or whatever then the Thursday, Friday, but it was months and months of training and work and games and changing things and learning things and we finally got to the summit then, even that year we did win it then. Came back the next year and, and right it or wrong and I wouldn't change it for the it was yeah. far better than the way we did it the next year everything that happened now at the time and still watching back the replay of McLean have a chance to go two up in injury time 
see your nana kicks away it's only for you to kill it it's running the yeah, cross it's right putting like 50 <coughs> pressure on him like it's still watching him back even though i know the result is not good in the heartstrings but the way we did it the manner in which we did it the complete performance the next day we were rolling with 14 points best team performance i think i've ever been part of everybody played close to maximum yeah and, and that was so satisfying even after the previous year even after the whole year's build up I still think that was the best way to win and it was Friday night too so Friday I got to enjoy it Friday, Friday night Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> um, I, I think as well that too that for me it's, it's the same as the setback um, it, it was the first time ever whenever after a game it, I didn't even shake the opponent's hand I was just when we, when we lost that game I went straight into the in the change room and just sat there and I was just like I just was in shock I couldn't believe could not believe uh, I don't know was it anger or anything I don't know who would blame myself or everybody else and eventually I just came back out and again it was kind of not straight after obviously it takes a long time but what brought me back a wee bit was seeing Josh again and he came over and he was like well just as if he was crying first of all but then he started playing around I was oh. like right well okay just refocus yeah perspective right. but refocus I think the biggest thing that we used all that year for, for the win the next year was, was that hunger was using that setback again as that fuel as that passion and whenever we drew the first uh, final then next year the first game again it was that right well like lads we didn't play and we're not letting us slip again and which resulted and I would agree like our performance that like, day was was phenomenal like everybody everybody was just there's no way we were going to lose that game there's no way um and again we all used that as a as a, a for coming back from a setback so yeah that was good and then is there anything I know as well too? Because just looking at your hand, you've had a few injuries as well too, and you missed the championship for us this year. Yeah, yeah. With a hand injury, um, you know, you want to talk about your hand one then too. You must have like early onset osteoporosis or something. <laughs> yeah, that's two fractures within six months. Um, obviously the most disappointing thing about the hand was not being able to represent my club. A couple of weeks later, we were defending county champions and we were going out to hold on to it. Somebody's going to have to take it off us and it was incredibly disappointing to lose that. Fair play to Pumarai that day, were definitely the better team and they went on to do really well. They probably should have got that county final. So um, that was a, ma a massive, another setback. It came at the end of the year, so it, at least I didn't miss loads of games mm -hmm. and, and could get back to working loads down in Dublin and be spending time with the girlfriend or whatever and family and socialising and going on holidays stuff like that because uh, that's important too yeah uh, and then I get back and obviously <laughs> break my yeah. fracture <laughs> you'd have my yeah <laughs> I, yeah I was kind of you, you just yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 holidays holidays <laughs> woo <laughs> holidays yeah no I, I know that's good and I, I think to be honest we've, we've kind of covered everything and I think we nearly we, we get tearing on because, because I think it's a phenomenal story to your level of commitment that you give, you know, it's, you've been, it's been well publicised about you doing tech work in Dublin, you travel up, but you're living in Dublin and you travel to, in their Dubai to go and train for a sport. And like, I work a lot in, in soccer, in football, yeah, soccer. and <clears throat> those guys are going, you don't get paid? You know, like I was away with one of the squads, it was under 19s and our, it was clashed with the county final. And I said, look, I'm going to have to leave. And, <laughs> the guy was a goalkeeper for Dundee and I was telling him, you know, what it was and how many people he'd play in front of and I said, oh, there'd be a few thousand at that game and the county final. I was like, oh, I read him, how much would you get a week? He's like, oh, no. He's like, what? He's like, three days a week and then you play in front of a few thousand people in a county final and you get nothing? He's like, not having that. Yeah. You not get kudos. Uh, so, um, I think that's, well, it's another area we could, we could maybe touch on, but, um, could maybe be up for another day, could we? Yeah. Yeah, but Taylor could come on. Maybe Taylor could come on whenever... Taylor part two. Taylor part two. Whenever we want something else to stand so that I would throw in the Kelly Clark. I don't know if we should wait that long. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> More hunger. More fuel. Um, yeah. So Taylor, do you want to finish up anything, anything else you want to add on to that? Or to round no. up our setbacks? No. Do you have any advice or any one thing maybe you could tell people? I know you maybe have mentioned before, but just a wee recap. Um positive mindset PMA massive um, affirmations so writing stuff down whatever works for you um, to me confidence is a big thing so 
when you perform something and you do something well, the confidence you get the next time you go to do it, you know you've done it, you know you've performed. To me, that's what confidence is. Um, if there's anybody that has any issue or wants to talk or wants any clarity in anything we spoke about, just give me a shout. And where is the best people? people Probably on just Instagram. Yeah, slide into them DMs. <laughs> yeah, the the top right hand corner. The we um and what what's your handle or what's your at T E E M C C A N N nice team can sweet and we'll we'll link it on the, on the show notes as well. So um yeah, Liam, have you anything to to add to that or we can finish this off? No, I think that was really good. I think it just gives it gives people hope for what whenever they're going through anything. I think especially because of the environment we live in, like. I'm one of the, the probably someone that knows least about throwing football in this whole country. Like, <laughs> uh, so focus on it. Like, I know some of the guys that play, but I didn't really get into it that much. But but uh, there's so many young people that could listen to this and take take away, like that they they could do it too. Like anyone could real realistically anyone could do it. Like a lot of the ones in the brawlers would be in the same boat as you thinking. Geez, if I don't get in that team, I can't remember what even the team was called. But the brawlers. <laughs> Yes. yes. Uh, so if, if they didn't get on that, then what's the point? I just give up. There's no, there's, yeah. I can't go on. Whereas they could do what you did and just use that as fuel. So hopefully, anyone listening to it will will realize that like their setbacks can, like you said, set them up for a comeback. So I, I I think it's worth it. I think. But yeah, your so, your story is really good, and the information that you're given is very positive. And, and you know me, like I'm all about positive. Mindset and mind frame, so I think that yeah, it's massive in sport. Definitely, uh, life. I older, think that's I think the older you get, the more you realize it too. Yeah, a bit, yeah. and then but because as we said before, you started at such a young age without even realizing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know, um, just working in the end game with soccer with the, the time people say it's a different mentality. There is guys in there that are good, but like the amount of kids I know went across the water in scholarships and come back and literally maybe didn't have the mindset, and when they come back. You don't even kick a ball at any yeah. level, you know. I think it's missing in this country. Like I know I do a lot of work with sports teams and sports I don't know watch football, but I I work with footballers, I work with Gaelic players, I work with people that have competed in the highest highest part of their sport that they can. And then you come over here and I've offered loads of different teams when I first came home and fuck, you don't really need that mumbo jumbo. You know, like I think you do if you look like look at all blacks like Everyone in the world knows who they are. Even yeah. I, I don't watch that much sport. Like, yeah. and I don't know who Most they successful are. team in sport in yeah. history, probably 90% team. Right. And, and one of the best things you mentioned at the very start is they, they keep that humbleness. They go in and they, they sweep up and they be asked all the time, what do you mean you go in and sweep? Why do you do that? Because like, it's part of the sport. Like, yeah. Whenever we started, we had to sweep up. You'd go play football. It's part of what you do. So it's like putting, putting the weights away in a gym. The guy, the person that you know, the person is going to succeed better in the gym, like in a competitive environment, is the one that ties up after themselves because they respect their area, they respect what they're doing, they respect everything about their sport. They don't just go in and do guns for Sally's. Shout out to Sally's. That's <laughs> yeah, is it. Um, they might be going uh, AWOL there. <laughs> they recovered it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I Darren, thanks very much. I. That was absolutely brilliant. It was okay. great. Um, thanks for coming on again on and uh, sharing your story. Uh, just to remind you folks that uh, the, our podcast goes out every Thursday at 6 o'clock. Um, if you are listening to please uh, find us on iTunes as well and give us a review because we want to get this message out to as many people uh, on our Facebook page, on Instagram. Share it with as many people as we can. And um, again, Tim has been quite open here today. And if you do... Want or if I could bend in the story at all, give him a give him a wee shout out. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, folks, for listening and watching. Yeah. Good night.